I am Andrea Pieroni, I am an ethnobotanist, I am a professor of ethnobiology here at the University of Pollenzo. Which is the importance of ethnobotany in the nowadays and future gastronomy? Ethnobotany is the science studying the complex relationships between humans and societies. And of course, we can say that uh, as old as uh, the first humans, they inhabited the planet, because uh, every human in the planet has an exposure and has built relationships to the plant kingdoms, both in terms of species and also in terms of ecosystems. Of course, for the gastronomy, the issue is extremely relevant because most of the taste we have in the world, taste of dishes, comes from plant ingredients and comes from specific constituents of plants' ingredients. They have taste and smell called secondary metabolites. The ethnobotany is the science studying then an old story, the story of the interaction between uh, humans and plants is about traditional knowledge. What is traditional knowledge? Traditional knowledge is the core business of the ethnobotany and also the core business of many intuitions as slow food developed uh, in uh, studying the gastronomies. The idea that uh, knowledge which has been uh, transmitted mainly orally and uh, mainly retained by local communities mainly retained by non-official actors of the knowledge, is crucial for shaping practices of gathering plants, of cultivating plants, of transforming plants, of uh, producing beautiful artisanal products and also beautiful dishes. The traditional knowledge, however, is very different from the scientific knowledge. Traditional knowledge is not only knowledge, is embedded into practices, is strongly connected to the empirical daily life, and it includes also beliefs and language. Traditional knowledge is not only traditional. In the way we may understand sometimes nowadays this term, is not static, but is highly dynamic and is the result of a continuous coevolution that the local communities and the natural environments um, had in exchanging and in uh, um, fostering uh, for centuries uh, uh, relations and exchanges. The most iconic example of how traditional knowledge is dynamic is probably the most iconic dish of the Italian cuisine, spaghetti with tomato sauce. Spaghetti are surely non-native in Italy, possibly arrived as Massimo Montanari teach us from uh, uh, the Arabs and of course from the Near East, as a direct consequence of the discovery of agriculture in the Fertile Crescent, and of course tomatoes came from the new continent. So the Italianness in this dish is not in the ingredients, but in the way these two things are put together. So the Italianness in the, is in the aesthetics. This shows that traditional knowledge is traditional in the way it's transmitted and is considered amicably part of the cultural heritage of the local communities, but is not static. And actually, this dynamism of the traditional knowledge is the best medicine and the best solution we can have also for the future and for the huge global and climate change we expect and we are still uh, uh, living uh, at the moment. Why? Because uh, in this dynamic of traditional knowledge, there is uh, some special energy 
which could forge also the adaptations they are needed in order to counteract the global change. Of course, not only adaptations are needed, we need also a lot of policies and serious policies, but local communities already are adapting to the climate change, using their traditional knowledge and rearranging it. And that's why this is so important for fostering sustainability of the food system in the future and also food sovereignty. Food sovereignty is very linked to the, to the traditional knowledge system because local communities have the traditional knowledge in their hands. In other words, traditional knowledge is the way through which local communities can design, can uh, practice, can produce, can enjoy their food system. And that's why we cannot foster food sovereignty in the world uh, just ignoring traditional knowledge. Ethnobotany then is there to look specifically at traditional plant knowledge and the very complex around of this knowledge, which is not just uh, identifying plants, perceiving plants, naming plants, using plants, transforming plants, but also enjoying plants the sociability attached to traditional knowledge is part of the traditional knowledge. There are aesthetics there and there are also social systems there embedded into the traditional knowledge related to plants. This means landscape, this means what we call nowadays biocultural heritage, this means also um, rules, for example the Uzi Civici the, um, the, the, the customary laws regulating the use of common goods are also part of the traditional knowledge. And that's why we need to study traditional knowledge and we need to study ethnobotany all over the world. Not just for the good sake of the scientist, but for enhancing the further coevolutions local communities have to have with their environments. In an alliance, that bring together scientists, local communities, environmentalists, and also, I would uh, expect, foodies, too. In one word, the science articulated by ethnobotany is very much on the line of what the European Commission draft as the next challenge for the next uh, decade, the citizen science. This means it's just not science for the advancement of the knowledge, but it's the science for the advancement of the communities made together with the community and with the direct participation of the community. And this is, I think, extremely relevant and I would hope to see in the future much more ethnobiological research and research done together with the community. In, in one word, one of the very, um, um, let's say, crucial idea of slow food, which emerged more than 30 years ago, is not only still alive, but is also the skeleton of the next uh, um, generations of scientists. The idea that the science is not a fact, but is a process which is co-created with different actors. In this uh, sense, when we see an old lady or even a mid-aged or even a young uh, gathers of wild uh, vegetables nowadays or a farmer um, rediscovering a local land race, we see the essence of uh, a continuous coevolution and we see also a value which is well beyond the scientific value and well beyond also the biodiversity as we have intended it so far. Nowadays we have to change this paradigm and pass from defending the biodiversity to defend the biocultural diversity and in this sense uh, this gather or this farmer are crucial in this effort. I sincerely hope that ethnobotany and ethnobiology will become the linchpin of further projects having the communities at the center 
and will also be able to escape the, I would say, sometimes pretty boring atmosphere of the academia and will be able to generate further seeds as the experience of slow food has well demonstrated in the past years. Thanks.